Right, last question of the paper, question 11. Nutmeg is a seed that is commonly used as a spice in cooking. The flavour of nutmeg is due to a number of different compounds. The oil in nutmeg, trimeristin, not sure entirely, can be easily extracted and purified. In an experiment to extract it, a student refluxed nutmeg powder in a suitable solvent. Removement of, removal of the solvent produced an impure sample of solid, not seeing it. Okay, suggest why an ether could be a suitable solvent to extract the oil from the nutmeg. Okay, so if it's an oil, an oil will dissolve in something which is oily, and by oily we mean non-polar, and that's really where you've got to go. Okay, so, so oh, that's very thick. Uh, so non-polar, uh, therefore, similar properties, solubilities. On top of that, ether is just a really good one because it's very stable, it doesn't react with other things. Any of that would be decent as well. Suggest so why the mixture was heated under reflux. So reflux is where you have your kind of heating mantle, whatever you're heating, and then what's really important is above it you have some form of condenser, and that condenser means that anything that's inside this particular reaction vessel remains in this space of the reaction vessel. So it stops evaporation because it just, every time it goes up, cools it back down, it falls back in. So it's basically that. Okay, so it keeps the reactants in the vessel or it prevents evaporation or it means that you can heat it over an extended period of time without losing your reactants. Okay, right, we've got another compound that can be isolated from nutmeg. Um, proton NMR shows that there's seven proton environments numbered on the skeletal formula. Okay, suggest a possible chemical shift for the peak arising due to proton environment 1. So proton environment 1 is on a double bond. You'll notice here that I've gone and pulled out the little bit from the page. So suggest a possible chemical shift. You have to pick a number between 4.5 and 6.0. Any number. Identify a proton environment which would produce a doublet in the proton NMR. So to get a doublet, so you would have your peak and then you have um, ones next to it that are being created by... Sorry, I made that into a triplet. Forget that bit. Sorry. Um, you created by the things that are next to it. So to create a doublet, I need a single hydrogen next to the one I'm looking at. So I'm looking for a CH. Okay, so in this compound set, there's a CH. So in terms of the ones that would produce the doublet, it would be either one or three because they're next to the two. That's it. Okay two steps to convert this compound X. Right, okay, get me back a pen. Um, okay, suggest the type of reaction occurring at each step. So we're going from here to here, they're not giving you the two steps, you just got to figure it out. Okay, so what have we actually changed? The change is here. Okay, so we've got rid of a double bond and then we've put in an amine group. So the double bond is what you need to get rid of first. And so what you're going to do is addition. And what you'll do is um, add in, well, basically you can either go to an alcohol or go to a monohaloalkane, which you can then substitute for your aiming group. So addition is going to be to the double bond. The double bond is electron rich. So you could say electrophilic. But I went and checked in the data book in the mark scheme and that was bracketed out so you don't have to have that. And then we've got um, the adding in here, but it's not adding, sorry, use the right term. We've got substitution here. Um, and this time that would be nucleophilic because it's to the, the dipole, but substitution would be fine. Um, and that's us.